everybody. The song was Thank You, Jesus by Daryl Petty. Uh, we, I'm going to go to a scripture before we open up, and I'm going to go to Psalms uh, 34, verse 1 through 4, and then verse 6, and then verse 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all of my fears. Verse 6. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all of his trouble. And then we're going to verse 8, and that's the end. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to a time of reflection with New Destiny Ministries, where we are empowering souls for destiny. Our founding host is evangelist Adrian Bernard, and I'm your co-host at this time, Sister Ruby Larry. A Time of Reflection is a radio broadcast that will encourage, enrich, enhance, enlighten, and empower listeners to trust God in every area of their lives, naturally and spiritually, and to pursue their God-given destiny without apologies. We are mandated to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ as we stand up, up firmly upon our foundational scripture and are built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And you can find that out of, I'm reading out the King James Version, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. And you know we're air live Monday through Friday at 1 p.m., uh, Pacific time, that's in California time. Our Saturday segment airs at 5 a.m. Pacific time with Minister Billy Burns. And, and you know we have early Sunday morning prayer, and it's a corporate prayer. Why, it, anybody, anybody that the Lord lead, you can come in and come in with us and pray for uh, 5, 10, whatever the Lord lead on your heart. It's about a 30 to 35 minutes before the, you go to your uh, uh, houses of worship. Uh, tune in, expect it, and receive fresh oil from God Almighty. And the call-in number is 858-683-1334, and it's for all of our segments. You know, and our email is newdestinyministry54 at gmail.com or mail any prayer request or praise report you would like us to share on the broadcast to New Destiny Ministries, P.O. Box 5702, Stockton, California, 95205. Also, we invite you to like our new Destiny Ministry page on Facebook, and now we on Twitter. That's why I read this today, to let you know the Lord is moving and taking us higher and higher in heaven with his word. We, uh, we are on a new Destiny Ministry page, and we are on Facebook, and we are on Twitter at New Destiny 54. Uh, listen online also at www dot new destiny ministry dot com to hear our archive message as I'm speaking today you can go on and you can hear and be listen to this segment. And you know what? We just so thankful for Jesus Christ leading and God y'all and we appreciate and are very thankful for y'all twin tremendous support of the godly men and women that willingly share the anointed I mean the anointed powerful word of God with each of you and us that call in and those that visit this broadcast by Internet or in the chat room. Don't sign off because God has a rhema word just for you. And we ask you to continue to pray for this broadcast that God will be done. And with no further ado, I'm going to turn you over to our founding host, Evangelist Adrian Bernard. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Ruby. God bless you. Amen. Is it anyone online can open up with the word of prayer? Oh, uh, 303, I don't, no, I don't see anybody at this time. You uh, want me to open or? Okay. 
Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity. We don't have to hold up. We know the Lord is able to to answer and say, well, Lord, I repent for everything I said, done, or thought that was not pleasing in your sight. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for keeping us all weekend long and blessing us as we went into our house of worship or wherever you have led us to go, Lord Jesus, with you on our hearts and minds and doing your will and your way. We just thank you, we love you, and we praise you. Hallelujah for your kindness and your mercy unto us as evangelists. Bernard, you gave her this vision a couple of years ago, and now it's intuition, and for blessing me to be the co-host at 71 years old, Lord, learning the, the, the switchboard, how great as, as our God. I say, ain't nobody like you. Hallelujah. You just put it in the mind, and you had to instruct the evangelist Bernard to teach me. And I'm so grateful and thankful that you would have me to be part of this broadcast and Aaron today to do your will and your way. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you allow us to come forth, Lord Jesus, because you could have picked anybody, but you chose us to come forth, and your listeners and your anointed men and women of God that bring this unadultery word to the gospel of Jesus Christ to your people all over the world. It's all over the United States and out of the United States, Africa, all over where it does say the Lord is going. And we just praise you. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless our founding hope of Adrian, Lord Jesus. Give us strength. You know what she's stand in need of. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, you say you will bless us and you will keep us and you will direct and you will guide our path. Hallelujah, and you say just be obedient. Just be obedient to my will and my way. And if it's anything you need, whether it be wisdom, you say acts of you. Whether it be knowledge, you say acts of you. Whether it be understanding, you say acts of you. Hallelujah, whether it's more love, you say acts of you. Everything we need is in you, Jesus, and we just thank you that you you hear our cry and you hear our prayers and you answer. We thank you that you're sending it all the way up from heaven where you are down on this earth for your precious people. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless the, the shut in. Hallelujah. That's not able to get to their uh, places of worship, Lord Jesus, that they can come on this broadcast and have, get a rain of word from heaven above, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for them, Lord. We thank you for the men and women that you have sent over this broadcast all over the world that anointed that preach Lord we ask you to bless them protect them guide them and direct them into all the areas that you would have them go in Lord increase their ministries increase their anointed increase their power hallelujah increase their living holy before you Lord Jesus that we may go forth in the ammunition of the Lord that we will be warriors for your kingdom hallelujah that we say Lord if we, we ask of any you said that we ask for anything in your name that you will do. Long as we live right and obedient, hallelujah, by faith, read the word and trust in you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for this opportunity. We don't take it lightly. Hallelujah. We pray for each and every one on this broadcast to come on on the uh, chat room, in, in the archives, wherever they are, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray for them because we know one thing. You never sleep. You say you never slumber and you never sleep. You're always there 24 hours for us. Hallelujah. And you know what we stand in need of. And who wouldn't serve a God like you? Hallelujah. I just love you and praise you and magnify you. I love you for the saints and the people that you're sending on this broadcast. They hear the word. They hear the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And we thank you and we love you. And we just ask you and we pray for each and every family member on this broadcast, Lord. We pray for their children. We pray for the safety of them in and out, going to schools, going to different jobs, interview, going wherever, the college, wherever, Lord, we pray for them. And we ask you to bless them and protect them and guide them and direct them and lead them all in the way that you would have them to go. And with that, we thank you and love you and give you the glory and give you all the praise. Without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we would fail. Without you, we would be like a ship without a sail. Oh, how great grateful we are today that we know Jesus. We know a man from from Nazareth that, that saved your, my sin sick soul, and he set me free. I'm so glad about it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Back over to you, Maggie. Uh, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Hallelujah. You. We give God glory today. We give him honor. We give him praise. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity to come back on the line. You are listening to A Time of Reflection with New Destiny Ministries, again, where we are empowering souls for destiny. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our co-host, Sister Ruby Larry. Thank God for the opening prayer, and we thank God for each one of you. Amen. As I begin to do some reflection, even on yesterday, as the Lord dealt with me in about going into this new series again, as I go back and look into our book, our log book, I looked at we began a series last year on the book of Acts, and we went chapter by chapter. Amen. How many know that the church was founded, amen, in this book? Amen. So as I began to look over our staff and our log, I see we began this series last year on January the 21st. Amen. And we all know that the book of Acts has 28 chapters. And we began January the 21st, and to my surprise, I didn't know I opened the first four chapters of this particular book, Acts chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4. But I bless God today that I don't have to cover those chapters each and every day. We will have speakers on throughout this series expounding on each one of the chapters. Amen. I looked back even and saw um, Pastor Hamilton out of Houston, Texas, who was our provoked to Friday's pastor, and he even taught on these uh, chapters in the book of Acts. Many of us, and I won't say many of us, but the Gospels are Matthew. Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. And Acts is considered to be the beginning of the church. The book of Acts provides a detailed, orderly, eyewitness account of the birth and the growth of the early church and the spread of the gospel immediately after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. This narrative supplies a bridge connecting the life and the ministry of Jesus to the life of the church and the witness of the earliest believers. We all know that this book was attributed to Luke, and we all know that Luke was a physician, amen, and he recorded and wrote the book of of Luke, and also Acts is a continuation of that book of Luke, amen. So the authorship of this book, again, was attributed to Luke. The date that this actual book was written, written, was between six between sixty two and seventy AD. That was after Christ. Amen. And as we begin to look at the book of Acts, we also know that the opening scripture was written to a man by the name of Theophilus. If you go back to Luke, you can also see that that book was also addressed to Theophilus. Now, there's no history about Theophilus. He was not an apostle. He was not one of the disciples. Amen? So as we begin to look at this, it's said that he was probably, most likely, a Roman citizen 
who had interest in the Christian faith. So that's what our research tell us about Theophilus. But as we begin to expound on the different chapters of the book of Acts, we can also go back, excuse me, we can also go back to Matthew. And I want to turn to that before we get into this first chapter of the book of Acts. If you can turn quickly to Matthew chapter 16, we're going to read just a few of these verses because we want our listeners to know that when Jesus said that he was going to found his church, he was speaking to one in particular person, and that was Peter. And as we begin to get into this series, we're going to see the main characters throughout this book is Peter and the Apostle Paul. There are some other characters as we go along in the book of Acts, but the main character was the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul. Amen. So if you turn to Matthew chapter 16, we're going to, just a moment. We're going to turn to, excuse me, let me get my notes here. Just a moment. Okay, as we turn to Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to begin reading at verse 13. Amen. And it reads as thus. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But then Jesus said, he said unto them, he's talking to his disciples, but whom say ye that I am? Okay? You know how we hear of somebody coming in a city, and we go on the report or the witness of another. We listen to what they are saying. And so Jesus had heard many saying who they thought he was, but he wanted to know from his disciples, who do you say that I am? So verse 15 again, he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And verse 16 says, and Simon Peter, and I'm reading out of the King James Version, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou. Simon Borjano, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So this statement really, this statement validates that Jesus had a Father. Amen? He didn't say, I am the Father. He said, Flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee. But my father, he said, my father which is in heaven. So clearly he was making a statement that I'm not the father. 
hallelujah, but I have a father. And that father which is in heaven, he has revealed it unto you. And verse 18 says, this is still Jesus talking, and he says, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, because Peter was the one that spoke up. Amen. The other disciples didn't say anything. Peter said, Thou art the Christ. Peter declared, Hallelujah, that thou art the Christ. And Jesus said, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, ah, glory to God. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And verse 19 says, and I will give, this is Jesus still telling Peter, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. How many know keys represent power? How many know that keys represent authority? How many know that keys validate that you have authority and power to enter in? Amen. When when I look at me raising all of these different children, all of these kids, my grandchildren and my niece, amen, and when I thought one of them was responsible enough to have a key to the house, I gave it to the responsible party, the party that I knew would, would, would authorize their entrance, the party that I knew wouldn't let anybody in to my home without permission, without them consulting with granny. So keys represent power. Keys, again, represent authority. Keys validate that you have a right to enter in. Amen. So Jesus told Peter, I'm going to build my church upon you, this rock, Peter. And he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail. How many know that when we stand on the rock, uh, when we stand on that rock, we have power. When we stand in the authority, amen. So Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. So he said, with these keys, hallelujah, guess what? You'll be able to bind and to loose. And whatever you bind, hey, it's going to be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose in earth, it's going to be loosed in heaven. How many want some power today? Ah, hallelujah. Power just wasn't given. The Holy Ghost just wasn't given. And we're going to read it a little bit. The Holy Ghost just wasn't given. For us to say, we got it. Yes, I got it. You know how you sing the song? I got it. Yes, I got it. Well, you have it, but what are you doing with that power that God has given you? What are you doing with this dunamis? What are you doing with this exousia? Hallelujah. You know when we have a headache, we get on the phone and we're calling a prayer intercessor. We're calling one of the prayer warriors. Now we say we have been given power. We have that power. Then why do I have to call somebody to pray for me when I have this Holy Ghost, when I have already been deputized, I have already been given authority to exercise this power that I have, then why do I have need to call on someone else? Ah, the Bible says, after the Holy Ghost comes, you shall receive power. And we're going to get right on into the first chapter in the book of Acts. Oh, God, I feel this thing this morning. Hey, glory to God. This afternoon, rather. Amen, amen. Let's now go into the book of Acts. 
uh, as our speakers that we assign these chapters to, to do this series. As they go through these chapters, you're going to learn how the early church exercise this power. You're going to learn, hey, hallelujah, how on one court. You're going to learn on the day of Pentecost how the Holy Spirit came on in. You're going to learn how they were filled. They all were filled, the 120. And you're going to learn also how God, how the Jesus added to the church daily. Ah, uh, we see people today, they're going and they're uh, uh, getting buildings. Uh, hallelujah. They're erecting edifices. They're erecting uh, sanctuaries. Amen. And many of them are declaring that this is my church. Ah, uh, but I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to serve you notice today that the church don't belong to you. Ah, uh, it was founded upon a rock, uh, and, and it was founded by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, so you can go and put your name on a document, ah, uh, and you can call it a church. Ah, uh, uh, but if it's not founded upon that rock, uh, if it's not founded on the principles, if it's not founded on the foundation that has already been laid, then guess what? Uh, hallelujah. Your labor is really in vain. Uh, uh, over in Psalms, uh, the Bible says that except the Lord build the house. Uh, and I want to be accurate today. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Uh, uh, let me go right there right quick because uh, I don't want you all to think that I'm coming up with my own scripture. Uh, but over in Psalm 127, the first, ver the first verse, Psalm 127 and 1 say, except the Lord build a house, except the Lord build a house, except the Lord build a house. I want you all to know as we get ready to expound upon the acts of the apostles, I want you to know that the church was founded upon a rock. Uh, it was founded on a good foundation. The foundation wasn't shaken. The foundation wasn't leaning. It was found on a sure foundation. In Psalm 127 and 1 says, except the Lord. What are you saying, Sister Bernard? If it ain't the Lord doing it, it's your doing it. But my Bible tells me except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city. What are you saying? Except the Lord keep the saints. Uh, the watchman wake it but in vain. Oh, so let's go on into the book of Acts. Amen. It says, uh, this one says, the former treatise. Ah, uh, and the treatise is all it is. is a is an order. It's an exhortation. Amen of God. He said, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Jesus began this work. We didn't do it. Jesus began it. He says, verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. I'm not talking about the modern apostles. I'm talking about those that walk with Jesus. There was 12 that walked with Jesus. And as we begin to go a little bit further into this chapter, you're going to see that one of them, the son, only one Jesus lost, and it was already spoken by the prophet that he would be the son of perdition. And as we get further into this lesson, you'll see that another hallelujah was chosen, but it was two of them, and they had to cast lots. Uh, hallelujah. I don't know if they prayed and asked the Lord to make the decision of which one of these would stand in the place of Judas. Ah, uh, uh, the Bible don't say that they prayed. Amen of God. But I know one thing, they had to be led of God. 
Because anything that is decent, anything that is orderly, hallelujah, it has to be ordained by God. When we try to ordain things, when we try to set things in order, if we don't consult Jesus, if we don't consult our Lord, it won't come out right. It'll seem like everything is going well. Oh, but after you get in the middle of that thing, if you haven't consulted Jesus, it'll be like Humpty Dumpty. It's going to have a great fall. Amen, amen. So we're at verse uh, 3. To whom also he showed himself alive. Jesus showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible truths. Oh, glory to God. Infallible proofs, excuse me. Being seen of them 40 days. And speak containing to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, we're talking about the disciples, we're talking about the apostles, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. How many remember the message last week when Dr. Singleton said, while you're waiting, keep on moving. Uh, keep on flowing. Don't get discouraged. Don't get dismayed. Uh, it's going to be all right. And then so he depart, He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. You all have already heard of me. I've been with you many days. I've fucked with you. I call each and every one of you all name by name, one by one. I chose you uh, to be my apostles. I chose you to be my disciples. I chose you to be my followers. Amen. But he said, one of them that I've chosen, I know he was a devil. Do you know that there's nothing hidden from God? But let me continue on. He said, Verse 5, we have verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but he told them to wait. He told them to tarry. That's what tarry means. All tarry means is to wait. Uh, uh, how many know that we have to wait on God? Uh, but while we're waiting, we got to keep on moving. While we're waiting, we can't get discouraged. While we're waiting, we have to keep looking to Jesus. Amen. And he said, John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, people of God, I just want to ask a question today. If Jesus said we were going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, why are we in the modern church today and they're saying baptism is not essential? They're saying confess with your mouth and believe with your heart and you are saved. Ah, is there another step? We have to go a little bit further. We can't leave Jesus in the mouth. Jesus, was, Jesus died. He was crucified. Hallelujah, he hung on a cross and died. But he told them that in three days, I'm going to rise. In three days, I'm going to get back up. Power. He had power to raise. He had power, hallelujah, to make sure everything he spoke to his disciples that came to pass. Let's continue on. When they therefore went, were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again kingdom to Israel? They asked him, Lord, are you going to restore at that time the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father had put in his own power. This is not your time. This is not your time. Hallelujah. Hold up one second. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's not your time to know the seasons 
which the Father has put in his own power. But listen at what verse 8 says. But he said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and, in, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. What are you saying, Jesus? What is a witness? That's a, we first have to define what is a witness. Hallelujah. To be a witness, you have to speak from personal knowledge of facts. And they have to have some significance. Okay? You can't go to the court of law and raise your hand to be a witness and testify about someone, and you're going on a third-party experience. You have to be an eyewitness. Apostles was witnesses. He's saying you're going to be witnesses unto me in Judea and Samaria and all the uttermost parts of the earth. What are you saying, Sister Bernard? What are you saying? Jesus said, after you receive this power, you're going to become my witness. How are you going to tell somebody about Jesus? How are you going to be an effective witness? And you don't even believe that he was risen from the dead. You don't even believe that he died for your sins. You don't believe that God had given him power. He said, all power is given unto you in heaven and in earth. And Jesus gave that same power to Peter, who he told his church was going to be built upon that rock. Ah, he gave him the keys. Did God give you keys? Did he give you any power? If so, what are you using it for? Are you using it for your own agenda? Are you using it? For recognition? Are you using it for fame and glory among your peers? Or are you utilizing it for the purpose that he gave it for? He didn't give it to you to be on CNN. He didn't give it to you to be on the Oprah Winfrey show. He didn't give it to you, hallelujah, to be in the great edifice sitting there saying, look at great Babylon. Look at this great edifice that I have built. No, that was not the purpose that he gave the power. He gave the power to them to be witnesses. Witnesses how? To go into the highways and the hedges and to tell people that he lived, to compel them to come. Ah, Jesus, we don't even let people know we're saved. We don't even let them know that we have any power. We're afraid to even tell people what kind of God we serve. We won't even give our testimony. When God has done something miraculous in our life, when he's put food on the table and you know your ice box and your cup boys was empty, Ah, and a neighbor stopped by and said, "Oh Lord, touch my heart," and told me to bring you these, uh, bring you these bags of food. I went to Winco. The Lord dropped you on my heart, and I went to Winco and did this. Hallelujah! And then we are ashamed. We are ashamed. That was God. Gotta talk to somebody about you. Gotta speak to somebody's heart about you. But you have to be an effective witness. Ah, ah, you have to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, he said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Some of us are ashamed of this gospel. I'm not ashamed of this gospel. I know what it done for me. And the same thing it has done for me, it will do the same thing for you. It transformed my life. Hey, people get angry when you don't call them prophets, when you don't call them evangelists, when you don't call them apostle, when you don't call them a prophet or prophetess. They get angry 
Oh, God, but I'm so glad that one day 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago, this year be 30 years, the Lord looked down on me. And I was so happy when they called me Sister Adrian. Ah, oh, hallelujah. My nickname was something else. Oh, hallelujah. But now I'm Sister Adrian. Oh, I got a reason to take pride. Ah, oh, because one day. Hey, glory to God. One day I heard the voice. Uh, hallelujah. I was pricked in my heart. Uh, and somebody told me about being baptized. Uh, somebody told me that I needed to be baptized again. Uh, I was baptized uh, twice. Uh, I was sprinkled in the Catholic Church. And I was baptized in the Methodist Church. However, uh, one day I heard about these apostles. Uh, I heard about this baptism in Jesus' name, and I'm not saying anything about nobody that's been baptized otherwise, but I'm telling you about my experience. I'm telling you about my conversion. As we begin to get into this book of the apostles, you're going to find out, <laughs> hallelujah, that Paul said, the Paul. We all know he persecuted the church, and they're going to talk about that later on in the series. Hallelujah. But when you have had an experience, can't nobody, can't nobody tell your story like you. Amen. I remember I was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And I really didn't understand what I had, but I saw and I heard as I, I, as I, I, as I uh, got baptized and I got involved. See, we get baptized and we go listen to other folks, but you got to get rooted and grounded in this thing. Amen. So I got rooted and I got grounded in this thing. I began to attend Bible studies. Study, and I began to learn about the body, about the Bible. I began to learn how to walk and how to exercise and how to use this power that was given to me. Amen. And they told me the only way I can identify with you and know that you have the Holy Ghost, you have to speak in another tongue. I didn't know nothing about tongues. Oh, where I came from, I came from the city of New Orleans. And Amen. And when we would hear people saying somebody speaking in tongues, we thought it was of the devil. We thought it was witchcraft. But I found out later it is the power higher than the most shaka. I learned about Jesus. I learned about his suffering. I learned how to live holy. I learned how to live right. I couldn't live right. I couldn't live holy even today. If I decide to not be led by this spirit that lives on the inside of me. I can walk away at any time. I heard the man of God say, when I looked and saw the prosperity of the wicked, my foot, it almost slipped. Hallelujah. You, you, can, you know, let, let, let me be clear. Let me just say this, people of God. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift that God gives you. But you have to have uh, you have to have a repentant heart. Amen. It can fall on you at any time, at any place. Amen. But it's a gift that God gives that He never takes back. And you say, Well, how is that? Well, you know, you hear people having the Holy Ghost and they backslide. Well, that doesn't mean that God has taken the gift from them. The gift is just lying dormant. The gift is in a stagnation mode. And anything stagnated, it has no production. There's no productivity. Amen. So if you don't nurture this thing, if you don't nurture this thing, it'll lie dormant in you. And anything dormant is not active. Amen. So when God gives you a gift, and that's why I love God. That's why I love him, because he's not like us. You know, when we get angry with one another, we'll take our gift back. Uh-huh. If, if I gave you some money, you want that back too. Well, God is not that kind of God. He's not that kind of God. The Bible says the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, whichever term you like to use, 
It's all right with me. It's sealed until until the day of redemption. So even though that thing may be lying dormant in you, it's going to testify against you. Where were we? Where were we? Let's go on. Let's go on. I got to move. I got to move. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. So while Jesus was speaking this to the disciples, he was taken up. And a cow received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. We're going to read a little bit today because we got to get through this chapter. I don't want to do another day. I want to allow the other men and women of God to come forth. So verse 11, we're at verse 11, we're in the first chapter of the book of Acts. And he said, what you also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, oh, watch Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And I imagine that was an angel. I imagine that was an angel. The Bible don't say. He's just saying the two men was gazing up. And verse 12 says, Then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were coming, they went up into an upper room, where both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Lotus, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continue. Listen, people of God, they all continue with one accord. They had one mind. They weren't arguing with one another. They didn't have no beef with one another. The Bible says they all continued with one accord. Are you reading out the same Bible I'm reading out of? I'm in the King James Version. They continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. Uh-huh, there go the women. You know, folks want to say, God ain't called no women. Well, the women was there before the men. Hey, glory to God. And I know he called women. Because he had Mother Eve. Uh, you don't know no shite. And there was all the women in the Bible that Jesus called. Don't tell me that God can't use a woman. If he used an ass, a donkey, to speak to a man, I'm sure God can use any vessel that's willing to be used. Any vessel that has sanctified themselves has been satisfied for the master's use. So it says, I, they were all men there that said, with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Let's move on. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120 Somebody else will be expounding on that tomorrow. I'll let you know who the speaker is. Hey, before the end of the day or early tomorrow, as the Lord give me the speakers, that's how I'm going to respond. Please know that we won't let you all push it from one chapter to the next. Uh, the Lord gave me this last year, and he said, I want chapter by chapter. I don't want nobody doing two and three chapters. He said, I want one chapter to be expounded upon in this series. And guess what? That's the same structure he has given me for this series. Another series on the Acts of the Apostles. Let's move on. And verse 16 says, Men and brethren, this is Peter talking, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled. Which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us. Told you that early. Judas, he was numbered with us and had obtained 
part of this ministry. Ah, glory to God. How many want to partake of a ministry and then be kicked out? Ah, but he wasn't kicked out. He kicked himself out because of greed, because of pride, because of self-ambition. Uh-huh. Amen. Oh, y'all, this is Bible today, not me. This is Bible. But he said, men and brethren, let me read this again. This scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God. What is he saying? He was the God. He was the one that took the lead and led them to Jesus. God to, to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man, talking about Judas, he purchased the field with the reward of iniquity, with the reward of his sin, with the reward of his greed, with the reward of his self-ambition. Uh-huh. And all day long, he burst asunder in the mist, and all his bowels gushed out. Ah, uh, you better not partake of this holy thing and then walk away. Don't partake of this gospel and then not walk worthily, then not walk circumspectly before the Lord. Do you know God will cut you off? Do you know he will turn you over? When God turns you over, there is no help. The Bible said Judah sought for a place, but there was none. You know why? He waited too late. People of God, I want to encourage you all today, don't wait. Don't wait until it's too late. Dr. Singleton told us to wait. While we're waiting, keep on moving. While God is still dealing with you, keep on moving. While God is still giving you a heart and a mind to repent, keep on moving. Don't get stuck in a place. See, we get stuck sometimes. And we allow these seducing spirits to keep us in a desolated place. We allow these seducing spirits to whisper to us and tell us that God won't forgive us. We allow these seducing spirits to take us farther than we want to go. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, there is a cross. Jesus bared his cross. There is a cross, people of God. We have to bear it. Don't let the enemy tell you that you've done too much for forgiveness. God won't forgive you. He don't care nothing about you. You done lied. You done, you, 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 done, you done did something unspeakable. You done walked away from God, and there's no more hope for you. Well, I'm here to tell you today that's a lie from the pit. Don't you believe that? Ah, God, he said, take my burden. Take it. Take. He said, take my burden upon you. Ah, he said, my burden is, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So the Lord, God is a forgiving God. He's a just God. He's a righteous God. He would that all of us would come into this marvelous life. God don't walk away from us. We walk away from him. God don't turn his back on us. We turn our back on him. So today, if you're walking in sin, if you've done something that you think is unforgivable, take it to Jesus. Don't let people condemn you. Don't let them put you in a box and tie you up and throw you into a sea of forgetfulness. No, when you came to Jesus, Somebody say, I came to Jesus just as I was. Amen. And when you came to him, he said, all of your sins have been nailed to the cross. 
all of your sins have been nailed to your cross, to the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus died for us. Not for us to go back. Not for us to, to get depressed and begin to allow these suicidal demons to begin to whisper, the devil is a lie. Hallelujah. I can go to God in prayer. God is a forgiving God. He would that none of us would perish. Let's go back. It said, we are at verse 19 now, and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem in so much as that field is called in the proper Thaldema. That is to say it's the field of blood. If blood is on your hands today, you can be cleansed. You can be washed. You don't have to keep that blood on your hand. Hallelujah. Jesus paid the price. His blood ah, was an atonement for our sins. Amen. Oh, Jesus, I love you today. Verse 20 says, for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation, that's what they were saying about Jesus, Jesus, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Hallelujah. Don't you ever think that God won't have somebody else. What you won't do, God already has somebody waiting. What you denounce, God already has somebody waiting. Hey, Jesus. Some people think that the show won't go on because of them, because of their expertise, because of their knowledge, because of their great diction, ah, because of their degrees, because of their because of their position and their status in the world. Well, give me a status among my brethren. I don't want the status of the world. Because guess what? When you take on the status of the world, ah, when you walk away from them, ah, you don't know, no, no, Shia, there's a price that you have to pay. When you take on the status of the of the Saints, when you have holiness, when you take on the status of being like Jesus, somebody wrote a sign, I want to be a follower of Christ. I don't want to follow the world. The Bible says we are in the world, but we're not of the world. This is not my home. Yes. Hallelujah. We desire to be educated. We desire wisdom and knowledge. We desire to live in a home, a nice home. We desire to ride in a fine vehicle. We desire to wear nice apparel. But that doesn't validate who you are in Christ Jesus because you're driving a Mercedes. I'm sitting in a Mercedes right now. Hallelujah, I'm wondering how I'm going to get gas to put in this vehicle to make it from one day to the next. Somebody said, well, why you got a Mercedes? Because guess what? It's just another car. It's just something else, some, a man, some man to man. Ain't no difference. Hallelujah. One is just a little bit higher than the other one, but all of them require gas. Amen. I could have a pinto. Hallelujah, and be able to put some money in the, in the gas tank in the pencil. Amen. So things don't make us people of God. What make us is what we have in our heart. How have we decided to serve our fellow man? This car don't mean that much to me. I enjoy it because it was a blessing from the Lord. I didn't have to strive for it. I didn't have to labor for it. The Lord, the Lord said, I will provide. I will supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory. If your ways please me, I got to go to the Bible. He said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Matthew 6, 6 and 33 says, 
seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. This is a thing, this vehicle. Yeah, I enjoy it. You take it away from me, I'll be crying. Oh, you know, I'm going to fire you. Hallelujah. Because it's getting me from point A to point B. But this doesn't identify who I am. This doesn't document who I am. This doesn't validate me as a person. I haven't arrived because I have a Mercedes. How? I have arrived when my brother and my sister has a need, and I shut up my bowels of passion. When my brother and my sister called me and said, Sister Adrian, I'm out here stranded on the car, and I didn't have something to call me one or two in the morning where folks refused to bring them home, and I had to get up out of my bed and go and give them up and take them to their destination. Uh-huh. That's what validates me. God, that's who identify who I am. I am a child of the king. So how many of you going to get out of your bed at 1 or 2 in the morning and go and kick up, especially this was a brother. This wasn't no sister. Somebody would have seen me 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. If, they weren't, if their mind wasn't on Jesus, they would have thought I was going to a hotel with this brother. Higher than the Messiah. That's right. That's where our minds go. But he was out eating. Uh, and he'll come on this line and tell, give this testimony himself. He was out eating with some supposed to be saints. Uh-huh. I said it was supposed to be saints. Because if there was saints, it's nowhere in the world at 1 or 2 in the morning. You want to deny this brother a ride. I don't care what your philosophical views was. They had a discussion. And they got into some scriptures. That's why it's not good to go sit down. When you go in to eat, go and eat. Don't sit down and get into nothing about the Bible. Because guess what? It's always somebody got what they believe, and the next person got what they believe, and I'm going to stay in on my conviction, and the other one going to stay in on their conviction. And I'm backing down on mine. Uh huh. And until that brother called me, and I thought it was an awful, dirty shame for him to go out with these people and eat. And because he didn't agree with something they said, they told him, Get, he better find him a way home. And I, I, I have him on this line during this, during this uh, book of Acts. And he'll test it because I want you to know I have no reason to lie. And I had the, the brother lived about maybe about five or six miles out the way. Uh-huh. So, you know what? If somebody sees this, what you doing with him this time of morning? They don't even know the story. So I don't owe you no explanation. The Bible says, don't let your good be evil spoken of. My good was going out here to help this brother to get him home one or two in the morning. What no buses running in Stockton? It was a shame. These were supposed to be Christians. That remind me of the Samaritan. Hallelujah, good Samaritan. Amen. You know what? You, know, you all know the story. You see your brother. Hallelujah, and he have a need, and you shut up the, your bowels of compassion. How dwelleth the love of God in you? I don't care if you're riding in a Rolls Royce. If you have taken on being a brother, a sister in Christ Jesus, Hallelujah, you have to set an example. Hey, glory to God. You have to go when you don't feel like it. This one, two in the morning, I know I was in a deep sleep, but I had to get up because of what? Duty called. Duty called. But let me move on because I'm going to finish with this because tomorrow we got a powerful speaker be on tomorrow, Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, we're going through the whole book of Acts. We're talking about the church, how it was founded, how it was set up, the order. Uh huh. We don't like order. Folks don't like order. They won't do it their way. But the Bible tells me there is a way that seemed right to man, but the end thereof. You better watch the end thereof. 
when you think you're doing what's right. Hey, nobody opinion, nobody or uh, uh, expertise or their knowledge matter. Yours is the only one that matter. Well, I beg to differ with you today. Amen. And as I begin to close on this, where was I? We're at at our verse uh, 21. No, let's read verse 20 again. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate. We were talking about Judas. And let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric, his office, we're going to give it to another. Let another take. Wherefore of these men which have accompanied us all with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John. Until that same day that he was taken up from us, talking about Jesus, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Verse 23 says, and they appointed to Joseph, that wasn't, that wasn't uh, Mary's husband, Joseph, Joseph called Bastabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed, ah, there they go, and they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen. Now, if you didn't pray, they didn't wait on the Lord. They cast lots. So if you, when you're waiting on the Lord, you wait on an answer from the Lord. But they cast lots. And it was common in those days to cast lots. And they gave forth their lots. And the lot values, that's, that's something like, you know, the Super Bowl we watched yesterday. Uh -huh. Some people had favored and had bet on Denver to win, but the tables were turned. Uh, and I've been in North Seattle, won that. And they, they, they won it with an impressive record. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they gave forth their lots. And the lots. Fell upon Matthias, ah, oh, glory to God. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Matthias was chosen. That's who the lot fell upon. Uh huh. And when the day of Pen oh, that's it, y'all. I'm going a little bit further. I can't go in chapter 2. That's somebody else's assignment. But I just want to say to you all today those of you that have patiently, hallelujah, been on this line today. I just want to encourage you all today that Jesus has given us power. And with this power, this power is just not to speak in tongues. This power is given unto us where we can be witnesses, where we can do the work that Jesus did. Because we know James say faith without work is dead. So you can't have work and not faith. Faith and work, they work together, hand in hand. Somebody says, show me your faith and I'll show me your work. I'll show you my work. Well, you can show me your faith, but if there's no, nothing else working with your faith, I'm going to question what kind of faith that you have. Because my Bible tells me faith and work work together. And that faith without works is dead. Ah, hallelujah, so I don't care how much faith you have. You better show me something. Hey, yeah, glory to God. Uh-huh. You know how they said in the day of Noah? Uh, the, 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 the Bible said there was no other sign given. But as it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be in the day of the coming of the Lord. Saints of God, we have to watch ourselves. And especially those of us that have been called into this marvelous light. See, we all were called to be a witness. Uh, it ain't just those that do outreach and missionary and evangelism. We all were called to be witness. Amen. He just gave the commandment to the apostles. But he told them that they would, after the Holy Ghost comes, they shall receive power. Amen. And this power is not just to them. The power is to all those that believe, all those that are willing 
to pick up their cross and follow Jesus. Do we have anybody want to follow Jesus today? Hallelujah. If you want to follow Jesus, you have to denounce the hidden things of the heart. You have to pick up your cross. Let me tell you, that cross is not something we enjoy carrying. That cross is not something we always enjoy bearing. Hallelujah. My uncle Al would tell people, you see people with their big old crosses on. And he told one of the bishops, I, was, I felt a little bad for the bishop because I, 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 I was, would have been a little bit embarrassed. But, you know, this bishop had, you know, that we were at a dinner, and this is my closing, and uh, 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 the bishop had this big old cross on, you know, big old gold, long cross, and a big old chain. You know, they, they decorate themselves with all this stuff. It's all right for those that like it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking that. But my Uncle Alfred. He told the man in the midst of this was like a a war ceremony, and he told the young bishop. He said, "You know," he said, "That's a beautiful cross you got on." He said, "I like that." He said, "But you know what? You wearing yours, but I bear mine." Ah! Word of God, the whole place went up. Now they laughed at it, but it had to be an embarrassing moment for the young bishop. In other words, Bishop said, you got your cross. You know you're wearing yours. You're showing off your cross. But then I bear mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you don't know all the things that I've gone through. You don't know all the things I've had to suffer. Hallelujah. So I want you all to stay tuned. We're going to have a good time talking about the book of Acts. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Do you know I had to ride around the day? Hallelujah. I, I couldn't even do my normal posting on Facebook. I usually post to about 20, 25 groups. I couldn't even do that because I didn't have no Wi-Fi connection. I was out running, doing an errand this morning uh-huh, for somebody else. wasn't mine. But then the time got by, and I said, Lord, I got I to gotta minister today, and I can't even get I had to stop. At McDonald's, y'all have heard my story many times, but I don't care. I I ain't ashamed of this gospel. I had to stop at McDonald's. Sister Ruby pulled up the switchboard. I had to stop at McDonald's in the car, hallelujah, and pulled up the Wi-Fi, and I was able to do two or three posters. I couldn't even do my little normal texting. I usually can let them know what we're doing. Uh huh. I do that. That's my daily. That's 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 a routine for me. It's 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 it's. And guess what? It's not grievous. Uh huh. It don't grieve me that I have to work like this sometimes. I'm sitting in this hot car right now, but every few minutes I turn on the air condition. Uh huh. Because you know I'm an old woman. I'm not. I'm not mother. Mother Charity, a Mother Cannon yet, but I'm getting there. Ah, you know, Messiah. Hallelujah. I was supposed to laugh at that. So every so often I have to turn on this cough, crank up the ignition where I could get a little air. But I'm sitting here in my Mercedes in this piece of, piece of metal that man has made, and I thank God that it's working because I can turn my air on. And guess what? I had to pull out my Bible and all my little reference notes, and I couldn't get to all of them because I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable because I'm sitting behind the wheel. And how many know that you can only do so much sitting behind the wheel? Oh, but when God puts something in your spirit, ah, you know, no, 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 I don't care where you are, you're going to come forward. And I had to come forward today. I couldn't let the, the enemy was trying to stop me from saying anything today, but I was determined. How many know that you have to be determined? How many know you got to have a made-up mind? How many know if you draw not to God, he'll draw not to you? How many know the way had already been made? How many know that God knew I was going to be sitting right here in the parking lot of McDonald's keep trying to minister to the saints today, trying to minister to our listeners today? So I thank each and every one of you all that have tuned in. We're we going to have some great speakers. On this, we gonna have some great speakers. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! But it, the the lot fell on me today. <laughs> Glory to God! I was chosen. I was the chosen one today to, to kick it off. Hallelujah! So I hope I did a good job. And if I didn't do a good job towards you all, I pray that God 
have mercy upon me. He knew what I was doing today. Nobody else knew but God. He knew where I was going to be, and I just want God to be glorified. So I try to do the best that I can. I might get a chance to come back throughout this series, but I'm not looking to come back. We have 27 more chapters, and every day we're going to have a different speaker. Hey, you don't know I saw ya. But I'm going to be led of God on who to give what chapter to and who to call on to speak in this series. Amen. Because some folks ain't even got to the book of Acts. Ah, uh, they're acting some other kind of way. But I want those that have chosen, those that have chosen to follow Jesus. I want those that have made a commitment to serve God. I want those that are not high-minded and heady and, you know, proud and lifted up. If you're proud and lifted up, God can't use you, and neither can I. So we, I want some humble people to come on here and teach this gospel. Uh huh. I want some people that God has designated and have given an assignment to that, hey, for God I live and for God I die. I want some soul out folks, in other words. Okay? You don't have to feel a bus how many degrees you have. Just preach and teach the gospel. That's all we ask. Preach and teach the gospel, not your gospel. But we want to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. We love you with the love of God. It's in your hands, Sister Ruby.